back to the 5J5 studio. I'm Parametric Phil, and today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about domains. Um, so we're going to talk about domains as they relate to uh, data management, but also uh, how, how we use them to, uh, to generate rectangles and other forms of geometry. Um, so first we're going we're gonna to just take a look at how we can use domains to um, in, in some of the list components and some of the sort of list sorting, list management components. And we can find the domain uh, in the math tab, and and then all of our uh, domain components are going to be in this tab. And uh, you know, construct domain, deconstruct domain, these are going to be used the most probably. And uh, these ones will be used a fair bit. The bounds component, uh, the remap numbers component, are I use them very frequently. And most of the other ones don't get too much use, but it's important to understand what they do so that you can use them. Uh, when you need to, but we won't be talking about these ones uh, in this video. Uh, we will be talking about remap numbers, we'll talk about bounds, and construct and deconstruct component. These, uh, these components will also probably come up in a different video. These components have more to do with the U and, uh, U and V uh, values of a surface, um, and it is important to understand domains, but, it, but it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a uh, a tangent to what we're talking about today. So let's start off by constructing a domain. Now, if you're not familiar with what a domain is, if you're not familiar with the term um, in this context, uh, it is it is similar to how we use it, you know, in in other areas. So if we're talking about a mathematical domain, it's not that different than when we talk about uh, a domain as in our occupation. So when you say that your domain is a cert, is engineering or something like that. It means that your specialization, your your professional specialization, goes from this area to this area, and everything between there is engineering. That's your domain. So a domain is it, and it's very in its most fundamental sense, a domain is from here to here, and it's everything in between there. Um, so the construct domain component has an A, has a has a has a start. It's a it's a A value and an end, which is value B. Okay, so we can we can construct a domain if we just plug in two different numbers. I'm gonna plug in zero, and I'm gonna plug in uh, 10. And so that's our start and end. And if we put that into a panel, we can see our domain right here, zero to 10, okay? Now, if we wanna use a domain to, uh, uh, in, in data management, it's probably going to be it's probably going to come up when we're doing when we're trying to um, obtain a sub list. Okay, so in the list tab, we can grab a sub list, and and a sub list is just a portion of uh, of of an existing list, and it, what it's asking for is is a domain. So that's kind of why we're going through this process. When it asks for that, we need to know how to uh, what's the simplest way to do that. So let's just create a, a list, a hypothetical list, something very easy to understand. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to make a list that goes from 0 to 99. So there's going to be 100 items. Okay, so there's going to be 100 items, so it's going to go 0 to 99. In a, in a series component, start is always defaulted at 0. The step count is always defaulted at 1. And then the count is always at 10. So you, so in this case, we only have to change the count, okay? So the count is at 100. So the list goes from 0 to 99. And, uh, and I'm doing this just because um, now the values of the list are matching up with the indexes, um, just, just for the sake of visualization, okay? So if we plug that list into here, into the list component, sorry, and, and then we plug our domain into where the component wants a domain, now what we're going to have is we're going to have a sub list. Um, this is our original list. Now we're going to have a sub list that just goes zero to ten. Now it's important to understand that the domain is looking. Uh, that this component uh, is using the domain to look at the the list indexes, not the list items. Okay, and so that means that if we change uh, if we change these values, it's going to be looking at the indexes, not the values themselves. Okay. And I'll give you another example. If we flip this list, we reverse it. 
the first list. Now it's going to go 99 to 0. Okay, 99 down to 0. So the sub list, okay, think about what was the sub list going to be. The sub list is as the domain is 0 to 10, but those are, we're, we're taking the indexes, the index 0 to index 10. So it's going to be from here to here. So the sub list is going to be 99 to 89. Okay, 99 to 89. So that's that's the basics of how we work with domains. And let's just go back to our original list here. If we, uh, of course, if we change our domain, let's say we wanted to uh, only get uh, values 50, uh, values 54, indexes 54 to 60. Um, and that's our domain, and now we have 54 to 60. So just because we we had, we titled, so the list items are the same as the, as the list indexes, um, that's why we're getting, it's just, it, I just did that so we can visualize um, how we're, how we're doing our data management here. And so that's why we're getting these numbers here. Okay, that's the basics of how we're going to, we can use domains to, uh, to manage um, lists, how to, it's, it's, it's how we can use uh, domains for data management. Um, most of the other uh, list components are not going to be using domains, so this is going to be the main one. Uh, and let's move on to a bit more complex, uh, a bit more complex idea where we're using domains. Um, and this is probably going to come up. This comes up in a lot of projects. Let's take out the bounds component and the remap numbers component. And this this is going to be best understood with an example. So I'm just going to put together a very very uh, basic basic project here. Um, I'm going to populate a a square. Okay, we have um, we have a rectangle. We have a hundred points in this in this rectangle, and our seed is one, and we don't have uh, any optional pre-existing population. So we have a list of points now, and let's say we want to create sort of some kind of pattern. I'm sure you've seen this before, where uh, we have a pattern where the um, we have we have uh, you know, it's it's called like an attractor script. Everyone has a different name for it. Um, and I'm going to put a point here, and then this point will influence the size of the circles that we're going to put on each one of these points. Okay, so let's take our circle, and we'll put our points there. And then uh, I'm just going to uh, figure out how big I want these circles first. Okay, so right now our radius is eight, and but I want the circles that are close to this dot to be larger, and I want the circles that are furthest away from this dot to be smaller. And I think I'm gonna be going from a range of about probably one millimeter to maybe 20 millimeters, okay? Now, that's interesting, right? I just said one millimeter to 20 millimeters, and that's a domain, okay? So let's let's construct a domain, and we're not going to use this um, for for a minute, but let's construct it anyways. Uh, one mil one millimeters our start, and twenty millimeters is our ending domain. Okay, so our domain is zero is one to twenty. Now, how do we? Um, so, so first we need to uh, gather the information that, that tells us what is the distance from this point to this point uh, for each, for every single point, and then we're, we're going to have a list, and then we base, we have to remap those numbers to be, uh, to, to be values that are uh, 1 to 20. Because we need to uh, adjust the size of the circles relative to the distance away from this point, okay? Uh, I think I should just do it instead of talking instead of explaining it conceptually. So let's take our distance component and go from uh, each point to our the point that uh, we have here. Okay, we've set that point. And so now we should have a list of 99 
um, a list of uh, 99 uh, different uh, distances. And with this, we can, um, with this list, we can, uh, we can uh, get the bounds, okay? So what are the bounds? The, the bounds, this is, t this is how we can find the shortest distance and the longest distance. So 16 is gonna be maybe this circle. We could find that out if we wanted to. Should we do that? Sure, let's do that. Let's sort the list. We can sort this list and then we can grab the first and last items, okay? So what I'm doing here, if you haven't seen the uh, sort list tutorial that I did, we're using the, the distances uh, as our keys. So it's sorting the list based on our keys from smallest to largest, and then we can put our A values in there to sort the circles using the same order as the keys. So it's gonna sort the circles from uh, closest to furthest because we use our keys or the distances. Okay, so a whole bunch of circles here, and we can plug that into our list component, and then this is our first index, and this is our last, okay? So now we know that this is our this is the closest circle to the dot, and this is the furthest circle from the dot. So we want this circle to be uh, a, diam a radius of one, and we want this circle to be a radius of twenty. So we need to remap these distance numbers that go from sixteen to two hundred five. We need to remap those numbers to be uh, actually twenty to one because because the the smallest number. We want this smallest distance, 16, to um, to be 20. We want that circle to be 20, and we want this furthest number, we want that number to be one, okay? So let's just get rid of this thing here. We don't really need this for the script to work. Okay, so we have our, uh, um, so okay, let's take a look at the remap, uh, the remap component, the remap, remap numbers component. We have, we need to input our values. Our values are the values that we want to remap. It's gonna be these values. Our source, our source domain is going zero to one. And, but our source domain is the domain that we're starting from to remap. And the target domain is the, the ending domain that we want to come out of this. So since we need we need the radius numbers, we need the radius the data of the radiuses, the radii. So uh, that's the result that we're trying to get. So our target domain has to be what we want our 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 circles to be, okay? And our source domain is going to be the domain of this value list. So we can use this bounds component. We can plug that into our source domain, and we can use our domain that we made here. And we can use that um, for our target domain. Now, I, I mentioned this earlier that there's going to be a problem here because um, because our our bounds our our bounds are going 16 to 205, which is 16 here, and the distance of 205 here, and we want our our radiuses to go. Uh, we want this the radius of this circle to be 20 and this circle to be 1. So we actually have to flip our domain. We, we can have a higher value uh, as the a value. And so we actually want to flip our domain so that it's 20 to 1. So 20 will uh, relate to the distance of 16 and 1 will relate to the distance of 205. So, that, so our target domain is 20 to 1. And then our results will be remapped accordingly. So now we can plug our results into, we don't need to use this slider anymore. We can plug our results into this, uh, these circles. And, and now we've achieved what we were trying to do. So now if we move this component, or this point around, it will recalculate and we can change our domains uh, if we want to. And uh, I'm gonna use this example um, in probably the next video to demonstrate uh, a bit more complex uh, remapping with uh, graph mappers.
and uh, that might be interesting to you so you might want to check that out if it's up by the time you're watching this but that's as, as far as we're gonna go there so that 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 is this is the most um, this is the most that I ever use a domain uh, th this is usually where I'm using domains and also for us uh, for creating a sub list um, and now let's take a look at um, how we would uh, use a domain to construct a rectangle okay so we open up a rectangle component uh, I want to get rid of this grid here so I'm just gonna plug this into a curve component and hide and uh, hide the preview so we can still see our the rectangle uh, our plane is at the normal X X and Y and you'll see that the uh, X and Y values uh, the component is looking for a domain uh, that's what that little symbol is in the hexagon there it's looking for a domain now if you saw my recent uh, one of my recent Instagram posts you'll you'll know that you can just plug in a value into that component and you can create a a square okay uh, or, or a rectangle if you have two sliders um, but what it's doing it's, it's taking your single value of five and it's actually creating a domain out of it so you can see there uh, it's it's generating a domain which is zero to five, so you can only use this method if your uh, start the start of your domain is zero. And if you want to move it around, you can just change the plane, and then you can and then you can keep using this method so that your plane dictates the the first part of your point, your first point here, and your uh, your values dictate where the second point ends up. But if you need to start your rectangle at a different value, so I'll give you an example. Uh, if you also, what I went over in the Instagram post uh, was how it was the simplest way that we can generate a square. So let's use the construct domain component again. And let's, let's disconnect there. And uh, if we want to generate a square, let's say we want to generate a square um, from the, the center point. So, so our x, y plane is actually the center point. And what I've done here is I've set up a few numbers uh, around the center point. So our x and y origin is here, our y, our y axis and our x axis. And I've zoomed in so that we're actually looking at each, each uh, square here is one millimeter, a one millimeter uh, unit. And uh, if we plug in our dimension of 10 into our, into our domain, and then if we add an expression uh, our a value is negative x divided by 2 and I'll explain that in one second and our b value is x divided by 2 positive x and we plug that into our x and y now this is the simplest way that we can make a square that is um, that is moving up from the center point of, of our world x of our wor world origin and if we change uh, the dimension it's going to uh, it's going to maintain the same center point because uh, because we're moving from the origin and so how does this expression work let's look at our a value our a value is negative x divided by 2 so what's going on here is we're taking this value which is x so it's negative 10 divided by 2 which is negative 5 okay so we've created the start of our domain is is negative 5 and the end of our domain is 10 divided by 2, which is positive 5. So our domain is just going negative 5 to positive, uh, positive 5. So it's going negative 5 in the x, which is here, negative 5 in the y, which would put us to here. So that's our that's our start point. And then, and then the, the end of the domain is positive 5 in the x and positive 5 in the y. So that's how we're ending up at this point here. And the reason why we want to use an expression is because we don't want to put in the values negative 5 and five, or at least I don't want to, because um, I don't really care about half the size of the square. I w I want to know. I, I want to put in the value that is the full dimension of the square. So the full dimension is ten by ten millimeters. So it's up to you how you want to go about that. But that's my strategy for uh, generating uh, squares when I want to generate them from the center point. And. Uh, if we don't want to generate from the center point, let's just use this grid to understand how we uh, we would generate a rectangle or a square 
that uh, where the um, where we want to control both the start point and the end point. Okay, I'm going to make some new components. So if we want full control of our rectangle, we have to generate four sliders and two, uh, two domain components, which is why in the last example, I was using an expression to simplify this process. But if you need full control, you can do something like this. So I've changed the sliders to go from negative 10 to positive 10. And now we can start. Um, and if we want to generate the same square that we had before, we would, uh, we would make our x domain go negative 5 to positive 5. And our y domain does the same thing, negative 5 to positive 5. And now you can see why I set it up uh, like I did in the last in the last example, a lot cleaner, a lot more efficient. But we don't. But this this example gives us full control of where a rectangle ends up um, uh, in the uh, coordinate system. So if we want to change just one value, we can change the x value, and we can change the y value. And now, even though our uh, our origin of the of the um, the plane that we're using is still uh, at the x and y. The rectangle is not uh, limited to to where that origin is because we have full control of the start and the end points. Okay. Okay. So if we look at our uh, our x value, our uh, first x value, it's negative three, so it's right here, one, two, three, and we can see it lines up right there. And then our uh, our ending x value, our uh, B value is at 5 right there and then same with the Y so negative 1 is where we're starting and it's ending up right there and positive 3 is where it's ending and so that's the that's the basics of how we're, we're using domains to construct uh, rectangles and that's where we're going to end it for uh, this video um, and let me know if, uh, if I missed any you know anything uh, anything any fundamental things to do with domains so we looked at um, looked at how we use domains to generate uh, sub lists we looked at how we use domains to uh, remap numbers and remember we are going to get uh, more into this uh, very soon because this can this can become uh, a pretty complex topic and uh, we looked at how we use domains to uh, generate uh, rectangles and squares. So let me know um, if that helped. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.